What's up y'all, Jeff Anderson here, One Fish, Two Fish, and if there is one thing that I love about doing this YouTube channel, it's when you guys message me, you comment, or y'all see me out, just out and about, and y'all are like, man, I love how you guys taught me how to catch my first redfish, or you guys, from watching your videos, I was able to catch more fish. And that right there is my passion for doing this YouTube channel. And this is gonna be totally free. Christy and I, we thought about it. We said, hey, we could make this awesome redfish course and we could sell it and we could do a book or something like that. No, we're all about giving everything that we do back to y'all. So this is a totally free redfish course. Everything that we do on our YouTube channel is obviously totally free. Please, if y'all haven't, please subscribe. Please like these videos. It helps us out. This is our full-time job and that's our passion is helping y'all catch more fish. So we're gonna get right into it. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is what do redfish like? What do they adhere to? And what are some of the things that we look for when we're out targeting these redfish? So redfish, they are a structure oriented fish. So there are two main things that we're gonna focus on pretty much with everything of this course. And these are the two of the three main things that fish, any fish is motivated by. So any fish is gonna be motivated by spawning, food, and comfort. Those are the three main things that dictate a fish's life. So for redfish in this course, we're gonna be focusing mainly on food and comfort. And if I had to do three, it's gonna be food, comfort, and protection. So redfish are a structure-oriented fish. When we're going out and we're looking for redfish, we're gonna be looking at areas just like this that I'm standing on. So these redfish are always going to be susceptible to predators. Even when they're a young yearling red, yearling reds are what we call uh, something that's like a you know baby size redfish, like up to about 10 to 12 inches. So a yearling red is gonna fall prey to birds, other fish, um, dolphins, sharks. When that redfish grows into that slot size and kind of that middle size of what we're really gonna be talking about in this course, and that's you know 15, 16, 17 inches up to about 30 inches, those redfish, they're still gonna be prey mainly to dolphins and sharks. So dolphins are one of the biggest uh, predators on redfish. Redfish are gonna have those two main things in mind. Um, comfort, which is protection and food. So the areas that we're gonna look for for targeting redfish are going to be grass, grass flats, because these grass behind us, both submerged grass and exposed grass, um, you know, provides an excellent like biomass. And biomass is another term that we're gonna use throughout this course and pretty much every tutorial video that we do. Biomass is just life. And where you have life, you have bait. Where you have bait, you find the fish pretty easy. These areas that hold a biomass, and those are gonna be grass, grass flats, because redfish, they prey on shrimp, is probably the most popular uh, forage or food for redfish is going to be shrimp. Some other things are gonna be mullet, finger mullet, same thing, just smaller mullet, um, croaker, spot, pinfish, pigfish, you know, just smaller fish, crabs, fiddler crabs. So shrimp and crabs are going to adhere to grass. And as you can see, we even have some of these oysters and shells below us as well. So that's going to hold not only higher water quality, but grass behind me right here, this submerged grass as well as exposed grass is going to attract shrimp love grass. So do crabs. So grass and oysters are something that we're definitely gonna be looking for for redfish. So when we're talking about structure, we're talking about grass, oysters. We're also gonna be talking about docks and rocks, jetties, laydowns, because that's gonna provide um, not only an opportunity to feed in a habitat that's going to attract those crabs, the minnows, the mullet, and all that biomass, um, it's also going to provide for those redfish protection and protection from their predator, the dolphins. Some of the things that redfish are also going to adhere to are going to be depth changes and current and, you know, current lines where you have a strong moving current next to a slack current. Because these redfish are opportunistic feeders. Remember, 
These redfish are focused on survival and growth is a survival tactic. Then that's gonna be a spot that these redfish can ambush their bait. Right here we have some footage, some underwater footage of what it looks like up against a grass line. And that's what we wanna look for as you can see in this footage is a deep grass line. Because in any inshore fishery, in any creek, there's miles of grass lines. But not every grass line is equal to the others in terms of targeting redfish because some grass lines have like a steep drop off some it's like a shallow mud flat that gradually goes up to the grass so what we're gonna be looking for is the type of grass line that we're showing in this footage right here that has like a steep drop off it is gonna also allow these redfish to ambush their prey but again there's other things that we're gonna be keeping in mind that we can't see which are gonna be depth changes and are gonna be current. So those are things that are gonna provide movement of that biomass, which is what a redfish is gonna be keyed in on, you know, these areas, these ambush points. And so where you have a steep drop off from a shallow flat to a deep channel or a trough, that's gonna hold more water. And where you have more water in a channel, you're gonna have more current or more flow. Therefore, you're gonna have more of a biomass. You're gonna have more food. Again, find the bait find the fish so these depth changes these troughs and these channels especially adjacent to some of these creeks and these flats and these areas that redfish are gonna go up into at those higher tides and they're gonna chase their bait and their food up into but they're gonna move along these troughs and what we like to call these highways that the redfish are gonna be moving and so these troughs and highways move not only the biomass but it's also going to be areas that these redfish are going to travel because redfish they do travel like puppy drum will travel sometimes you'll catch them here in one spot and then they'll move down a half a mile another mile and larger redfish like adult size class redfish will move miles even in a certain day depth changes are definitely something that we really want to be keeping in mind no matter where we're fishing. So another structure that redfish adhere to is also going to be like jetties. Um, you know, jetties provide amazing structure. Um, so jetties provide uh, an amazing like environment and ecosystem for uh, the fiddler crabs, the blue crabs, and you know, a lot of our smaller bait fish as well. So it's going to have tons of food options at a jetty. Um, a jetty is pretty much like an all-you-can-eat buffet for redfish that's just always moving a different meal. So sometimes shrimp might be on the buffet. Sometimes crabs might be on the buffet. So there's just tons of variety of different species that's going to adhere to a jetty. So no matter where you're at, y'all in Texas have some of the best jetties ever. And you guys catch everything from slot size reds up to like 50 inch redfish right off of your jetty. So, so with most jetties, you're also gonna have like a significant depth change where you have like an inlet in that channel that could be 40 to 50 feet deep. And then right up against that jetty, you know, it could be five to 10 feet deep. So you're gonna have a significant drop off a lot of times with your jetties that, you know, again, a jetty is just amazing for redfish. Almost all year round, you know, jetties are gonna hold redfish as long as the water temp is conducive for those redfish. So a flat is where you pretty much have a more shallow um, area of water that pretty much remains the same. It could be like, a lot of flats are gonna be like a cul-de-sac. So flats could be like, for instance, here I'm showing you guys on Google Maps and on Google Earth what a flat looks like. Um, this flat that I'm showing you guys right here is, you know, about two to three feet um, average water depth across this flat. But, but these flats hold that submerged grass and they hold that biomass. You know, redfish love crabs and shrimp because growth being a survival tactic for redfish, uh, crabs and shrimp, just like for people, provide a high protein and very nutritious meal for redfish. So you know, these redfish are gonna be keyed in on those shallow flats. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlay some footage of us fishing some docks and just what we look for when targeting redfish on docks. Because docks, um, just like jetties, are pretty much gonna hold redfish all year round. So this first dock that I'm gonna show y'all is Christy and I. Uh, we were fishing um, this deeper dock that was right next to a main channel. So the channel like was actually like right near the end of this dock. 
So at the end of the dock, it was like 25 feet deep at high tide. At low tide, it was like 15 feet deep. So this dock right here, it, as you can see, it provides excellent protection from dolphins with all the structure around this dock and all the pilings and everything. So uh, docks that hold deeper water, also older docks and longer docks. So when you're evaluating different docks, um, you want to be looking at and keeping in mind the oldest dock. And if you have a dock that looks old and it's also a longer dock and maybe that dock has lights on the end of that dock, then that's going to be a dock that is definitely going to stand out. So not every dock is the same, especially for redfish. So that's why we're going to be looking at deep water docks. And we're also going to be looking at docks that might hold more current, might be near a jetty adjacent to a flat. Um, but one of the main things that we're going to be looking at with docks is also just the age of the dock because redfish are creatures of habit. Redfish might come back to that same feature, that same jetty or that same flat year in and year out. Same thing for docks. The other thing that we want to talk about is the seasons and how redfish generally move throughout the seasons. So let's start with the winter time. So in the winter time, redfish, their main concern is just like survival. That's it. So it's pretty much going to be staying alive and avoid getting eaten by dolphins. That's really the two main things that a redfish is going to be focused in on. The other thing is going to be that water temperature. So redfish are going to pretty much push up into those shallow flats. They're going to go back into those deep creeks with those dark muddy bottoms that on a nice sunny day like today, that, that dark muddy bottom is gonna kind of warm up and it's gonna warm up that water temperature. So the redfish, not only are they coming up in there for that warmer water temperature, they're also coming up in there because they absorb some of that heat from the sun. So the redfish are gonna push up into those shallow creeks and they're gonna get into large schools. And some of the areas that we wanna look for are these shallow creeks that have that dark muddy bottom. Maybe that have some of those structures like lay downs and some of this footage that we're showing y'all right here is us catching these redfish in the winter time up in these tiny creeks um, where these redfish are protected from dolphins. So survival is gonna be the main thing that these redfish are gonna be focused in on and just getting through the winter time. So these redfish, they're gonna slow down and they're gonna school up. Uh, their you know, metabolism is gonna slow down a little bit. So that's why in the winter time, we're gonna be using a lot of slow moving baits. We're gonna be using more scented baits because we need to entice these redfish to eat. So these redfish, they are gonna be feeding, but they're not gonna be expending too much energy. So winter time, that's the general pattern. These redfish, they're gonna be schooled up and they can be into very, very large schools. You know, so a lot of charter guys who we work with, their favorite time to target reds is in the winter time because they're just catching sheer numbers of redfish and you know you find one school of them as long as you don't spook them then you're going to be catching redfish for pretty much the whole entire day so when one fish kind of spooks then that generally you know gets that whole school going also when one fish feeds then that will also kind of get that whole school going as well so these redfish in the winter time are very very collaborative you know you're going to be keeping in mind the protection from the dolphins in the winter time and also where they can you know, seek that warmer water that, you know, they're going to be feeding on those gudgeons and some of those like mud minnows and things of that sort. So that's where we're going to be using some of the Berkeley gulps and some of our scented baits in the winter time. Now, as the water starts to warm up springtime, springtime can be a little tricky because you're still going to get those really cold days. You know, springtime, you know, you want to maximize those warm spring days and that's when those redfish are going to be more enticed to feed. So as that water temperature warms up and, you know, that biomass and, you know, the mullet start coming back in, the shrimp start coming back in, then that's when these redfish are going to be a little bit more comfortable and not as worried about the dolphins because now the dolphins have a lot more food options and the redfish aren't their main source of prey. So the redfish, they're going to start to break away from those large schools. And as the water temperature warms up, then, you know, you're going to start to get a little bit more aggressive redfish. So maybe you're going to be using a popping cork. You're going to be, might, you know, you might be able to catch redfish on top water and things of that nature. So as summertime comes into effect, we have, you know, just like tons of biomass in our creeks and in our intercoastal waterways. And that's where, you know, 
you're gonna have excellent redfish fishing, but you do want to, you know, keep in mind that water temperature as summer progresses into July and August. So when that water temperature gets really hot, those redfish are gonna to move to areas where they're most comfortable. So that could even be like a deep water dock. Um, you know, that could be like a jetty that has some depth to it as well. So in the summertime, you know, you're still gonna get those redfish up on the grass flats. Absolutely, that's in Charleston. You guys have that awesome tailing redfish fishery, Mosquito Lagoon, same thing. So the crabs are in full effect in the summertime. So that's when redfish are gonna be digging, you know, into the ground. And also that's when you get those tailing redfish. So tailing redfish, we'll probably do a separate video on that, but summertime is amazing to target those tailing redfish. And then as the water temperature starts to cool down and the days kind of shorten up a little bit and you start getting into September, October, that's when you're gonna have killer redfish fishing because they know that winter time is coming and they gotta pack on the pounds. And also that water temperature is kind of cooling off just slightly. So in, the, so in the dead of summer, while redfish might be a little bit slower because the water temperature is so, so hot, um, as that water temperature cools down a little bit, that's gonna get those redfish just into this crazy feeding frenzy and so september october november and even into december are going to be some amazing redfish fishing months fall those fish are really going to push up shallow the shrimp have been in our intercoastal waterways you know from you know early summer and now those shrimp what we like to call our like bull shrimp they're large they're larger shrimp so redfish are going to be keyed in and they're going to be gorging themselves on shrimp if you ever catch a redfish and you'll see like some antennas coming out of their mouth you'll see that they're feeding on shrimp and if you find shrimp i guarantee you you're gonna find redfish in that very close proximity so in the fall those shrimp are really gonna be on the move and that's when you'll see a lot of your shrimp boats out and about so the fall is going to be one of the best times to catch redfish because the water temperature is right there's tons of food that's moving the biomass is moving you've got the mullet run that happens you know up and down the east coast so biomass is moving and the redfish know that they got to eat so those redfish are going to be everywhere they're going to be up on shallow flats you're going to be catching them on top water popping corks live bait jetties off the beach everywhere so fall is amazing so that right there is kind of the short synopsis of how redfish move throughout the seasons Today, I'm going to be showing you guys some of the top lures that you guys can put in your arsenal when you guys are going after some redfish, the red drum. All right, so right here I've got my spinning tackle, I've got bait caster, and we are going to be starting everything from our hard plastics. We've got our top water, uh, top dog to the skitter V for mirror lure. Then we're going to kind of come down, talk about the different mirror lures. Um, we've even got some jig heads. This is one of the main ways Jeff and I love to get on some fish is the soft plastic. All right, the first thing we're going to start talking about are jig heads and your soft plastic. So here we've got um, a bunch of different jig heads that you guys can buy. Everything from short shank, uh, trout eyes right here to the gotcha jig head with longer shank. All right, so the most common right here is the quarter ounce. This is what Jeff and I have rigged up. This is gonna be if you guys are fishing in the flats. Uh, you guys are gonna just tie on your leader line and go straight to a jig head. Quarter ounce is gonna get the job done when you guys are going after those reds fishing up in the flats. Now, if you guys are targeting the deeper troughs, the sloughs, uh, so you guys are fishing in a deeper kind of pocket, you guys are gonna wanna up that to a 3 8 ounce. Uh, one of your bigger options for the jig head. This is what's going to get it down to, uh, you know, the bottom of that channel to target those reds. Now, if you guys are fishing over an oyster bed um, or, you know, really shallow and you guys don't want to get hung up, definitely. And this is the 1 8 ounce. And this will really help to suspend it above all of the, you know, the rocks and, um, and the grass that's growing down there so that way you guys are not getting hung up. Probably the main thing that Jeff and I typically use when getting out after redfish, especially fishing up in the flats, uh, these are gonna be some of the most versatile baits that you guys can use, uh, whether thrown up against jetties, uh, whether you guys are fishing the flats, fishing uh, deeper water sloughs, or if you guys are even trolling, these are an awesome option as well. All right, so here we have all of our kind of different style popping corks. If you guys are uh, kind of first one I wanna talk about, if you guys are fishing, um, 
um, say you're down in the Keys, uh, you guys want something with a little bit less water um, noise and disturbance, this one is great. It's a cigar style. Uh, this one is another great option if you guys are fishing in open water. It's got a kind of a concave piece right here, which really helps it to push more water. And uh, then this one is the one that Jeff and I typically fish with, um, you know, just this, this kind of egg style right here. Um, it's got a nice um, profile to it and this is great if you guys are fishing kind of skinny waters. All right, so hopefully y'all enjoyed that video. Again, if you guys haven't, please help us out. Please subscribe. This course right here is something that we put a lot of work into. This is like years and years in the making. So if you guys haven't, please hit that subscribe button, help out this channel, and we'll see you guys on the next vid. All right, y'all, peace out.